Welcome to Cinemeric Live, Application Technology Made Easy. The aim of this series of short videos is to present specific topics on the practical use of Cinemeric. Today it's time for the seventh and, for the time being, last part of our special video series on the topic of flexible CNC programming. Since these videos are based on each other in terms of content, I'm assuming that you've already watched all six previous episodes of this video series. And, as always, at this point, I recommend everyone to use a digital twin of the CNC. I myself use Run My Virtual Machine, the virtual Cinemeric One, for this purpose. In my last video, I already mentioned that I'd like to present a few more interesting Cinemeric CNC language commands. So, today, we'll first look at Programmable Coordinate Transformations, so-called frames. The second part of the video is then about the indirect programming of G commands. This allows CNC programs to be designed even more flexibly. Let's start right away with the Programmable Coordinate Transformations, the so-called frames. By the way, a frame is nothing more than a calculation rule which transforms one Cartesian coordinate system into another Cartesian coordinate system. So, what frames are there? Let's begin with the MCS machine coordinate system. The basic offset, the so-called basic frame, is laid on top of this. This is, so to speak, an additional subordinate settable work offset. This is followed by the actual settable work offset, for example, G54. Then comes the programmable coordinate transformations, the frames. Finally, the workpiece coordinate system, the WCS, is defined. Let's imagine a digital photo. What can you do with this photo, for example? You can simply shift it, or rotate it, or the photo can be scaled or even mirrored. And this is exactly what you can do with the four frame instructions trans, rote, scale, and mirror. In other words, shift, rotate, scale, and mirror. These frame instructions can, of course, also be concatenated. I'm starting here with frame G54, the settable work offset. First, I rotate the image using the rote command. Now, I want to shift the rotated image. For this, I use the a trans command, that is, an additive translation. The whole thing is then scaled additively with the command a scale and finally mirrored additively with a mirror. It's important to realize that the order of the additive frame instructions has an effect on the final result, as illustrated very nicely in this example. Again, I start with G54. Instead of now rotating it as in the previous example, I first shift it. So the first two frame instructions are swapped. As before, this is followed by additive scaling and additive mirroring. It's clear to see that changing the order of the frame instructions leads to a different end result. There's also a system variable for the currently programmed frame. This system variable is called $P underscore P frame. It contains a record of the concatenated frame instructions and can be read out whenever required. Let's take a closer look at the structure of a frame variable using the example of the system variable $p underscore p frame. You can imagine the data type frame in principle like a cabinet with drawers. Here the first three drawers contain the translation of the geometry axes x, y and z programmed via the trans or a trans commands. The next three drawers contain the rotation of the coordinate system. They are basically filled with the commands rote or a rote. The next three drawers contain the scale or a scale scaling commands. Mirroring is located in the three bottom drawers which are filled with the commands mirror or a mirror. 
There are also other CNC language commands that can be used to specifically fill individual drawers. I'll discuss this later. Let's take a look at the whole thing in a CNC program. The CNC program is already open in the editor. First, a user variable of the type frame is defined. It goes by the name MyFrame, which is more or less the cabinet with the 12 drawers just mentioned. This is followed by the tool Spindle Speed and Work Offset. Now we traverse to the origin of the workpiece coordinate system to rough a rectangular pocket with a width and length of 30 mm. Using Trans60, the coordinate system is now shifted by 60 mm in X to machine the exact same rectangular pocket again. Next comes a rotation. By the way, a trans, rote, scale or mirror command without A at the beginning resets the already active programmed frames. Consequently, in this example, the rotation takes place again at the coordinate origin. It doesn't matter whether you write rote Z45 or rote Z equals 45 for the rotation. Cinemeric accepts both notations. Additive shifting is then performed with A trans. I'll keep this combination in mind for later. For this purpose, the system variable $p underscore p frame is read out and the content is written to the user variable. Now we want to mirror the rectangular pocket, but you have to be careful here. Mirroring is not performed around the x-axis, rather the x-values are mirrored around the y-axis. That's a bit quirky, so it's worth taking note and keeping it in mind. An additive shift and another additive scaling follow each by a factor of 2 in X and Y. When scaling with the scale command, it's important to remember that only the geometric size of the rectangular pocket is changed. Parameters such as tool, milling path overlap and so on must be adjusted manually. I mentioned earlier that there are other CNC language commands in connection with frames. With C trans left parenthesis X comma 120 right parenthesis, the top drawer of the system variable $p underscore P frame can be filled directly, for example. This command corresponds to the command trans X 120, but handling is more versatile. The commands C trans, C rote, C scale and C mirror do not have an additive effect. Therefore, they reset the already active programmed frames. In the last step of this example, the already rough machined pocket is to be chamfered. For this, of course, we have to change the tool first. To perform chamfering, the programmed frame of the pocket is reactivated. The previously noted value from the user variable is assigned to the system variable $p underscore p frame. Then, the cycle of the rectangular pocket is called with the machining mode chamfer. The complete machining process in this example is finished after chamfering. Finally, it's tidied up, so to speak. With the command trans, without further parameters, the programmed frame is deleted without activating a shift. This applies analogously to the commands rote, scale and mirror if they are executed without further parameters. I've addressed this topic in such detail because frames is such a commonly used tool. The second part of this video is dedicated to the indirect programming of G commands. As we'll see, there are two variants here. So, what are the so-called G-code groups? G-code groups are groups of related CNC commands. Only one of these commands can be programmed at a time in a CNC block because one cancels the other. The commands also have a modal effect. This means that the command of the G-code group automatically acts in the following CNC blocks until revoked by another function of the same group. Accordingly, the modally effective motion commands of the first group are G0, G1, G2 to G336. G336 is the language command for convex threads, by the way. In group 8, you'll find the adjustable work offsets and in group 15, 
the feed rate types from G93 to G973, for example. Now let's look at an application example of indirect G command programming. The idea is to react flexibly to the different number of clamping operations in the machine. For this purpose, different work offsets must be used depending on the manufacturing job. First, you define an integer variable for the number of clamping operations. Later on, this variable is then assigned the exemplary value 3. By the way, this could be the transfer value of a user cycle. The 8th G code group is then addressed with G squared bracket open, 8 squared bracket closed. This is the group with the adjustable work offsets. The command is assigned the value of the user variable, that is 3. The comparable direct language command would be G55. Finally, the plane and tool follow. If you now start the program in automatic mode, you'll see that G55, which is the third command in the 8th G code group, is active. Now let's look at the second type of indirect programming of G commands. First, a text variable with 255 characters and the name command is defined. Three shorter text variables with the names feed, speed and offset follow. The following texts are assigned to these three text variables, F1000 for feed, S2000M03 for speed and offset is assigned the text G56. Then feed, speed and offset are concatenated to form the command variable. This is followed by the exec string command, which is assigned the variable command as a parameter. At the end, a programmed stop is set with M00. As you can see in this example, all I've done is prepare one CNC block as a text variable. The text is then implemented as a CNC block. That's also the reason why the variable command is 255 characters long, the maximum length of a CNC block. Of course, you have to be careful because syntax errors in the text variable will automatically also lead to syntax errors in the CNC interpreter. If you now look at the whole thing in the automatic mode of the CNC, you can see that 1000 has been adopted for the feed rate, 2000 for the spindle speed, and G56 for the work offset. Let's not forget that this is certainly the most challenging aspect of flexible CNC programming. However, when creating your own user cycles, this is definitely an adequate means of achieving your objectives. So, this was the last part of our video series all about flexible CNC programming for the time being. I hope the videos have sparked or even increased your interest in the topic. Our goal was also to use these videos to contribute to continuous lifelong learning on the complex topic of CNC programming. And finally, as always, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to the cnc for You newsletter. The newsletter will also inform you when there's a new Cinemeric Live video available. Thank you for watching and see you soon.